giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to our shallow dive show here with 1720, reporting for first updates now. I'm Sohib Nadim. I'm Tegan Poles. I'm and... Bryce. Oh. I was just going to introduce the guests. Go on ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'm Bryce. Uh, my name's Akash. And I'm Sean. Bryce, Akash, and Sean, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Why don't you guys just go ahead and tell us what you do with the um, do on the team? So, Bryce, I know you're the operator, so it, I'm, it's also your first year on the team. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about 1720 and what you do. So, I'm the operator. It's my first year on Drive Team as well. Um, operator, I am one of the lead designers, and I do a lot of a lot of machining, prototyping, stuff like that, as well as design. Um, I was on another team before this team. I was on 3494 before joining 1720 for two years. And then Akash, do you want to tell us a little bit more about your background with uh, 1720? Uh, yeah, uh, I joined uh, four years ago, I think. Um, I joined when I was in eighth grade. Uh, I used to work in uh, woodworking, and then this year I switched to media. Um, I find that more uh, fun, I guess. And then I've been told to call you Bat Hawkman. Uh, Sean, tell us a little <laughs> bit about what you do. Uh, this is actually my fourth year as the uh, team president. And I've been on the team about 11 years now. And I uh, do a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm also an IT mentor with the team and do a lot of the fundraising as well. Awesome. So before we get right into it, guys, I want to tell you that we do have a giveaway today uh, of an IMU. So this is, uh, we're just going to cue in Tyler over here and tell us a little bit more about what the whole giveaway is about. Yeah, I want to give a big shout out once again to our friends at Analog Devices for giving out this awesome ADIS 16470 IMU board. Uh, lots of teams have been using this in first, uh, and this is a great time. You know, once again, with the suspended season, uh, if you win this, uh, the play around with things. Try some stuff out. Check out their GitHub and their wiki and see what's going on with that. They'll be giving this away a little bit later on during the show. All you have to do is make sure you have, uh, you're have you following the channel, and there's a keyword for you to type in. And don't forget our subscribers get five times luck to win. So good luck, everybody. Enjoy the show. Awesome. So obviously today we have the winners at the Bloomington event in Indiana to tell us a little bit more about their team, uh, how they work, how they fix the gears, uh, <laughs> all that stuff. So why don't you guys just go at it, tell our viewers a little bit more about your team. Um, I'll go ahead and start here. Uh, one of the biggest questions we get from everybody is the uh, the name itself, fixed gear. So we'll kind of clear that up for the world here. Uh, it's a combination of physics, the old XT computer architecture, and the actual fixed gear on a bicycle. So that's, that's what they came up 15 years ago when the team started up fixed gears, and that's us. Cool. We're a community-based, I guess, because we don't have a school-affiliated mm -hmm. team in uh, Matthews, Indiana, just about like 20 minutes north of Muncie now. Uh, we moved shops this year because of, I forget why exactly, we had some reasons. So we have a shop up in Matthews, and most of our, most of our students are still from the Muncie area, but yeah. Cool. 
I'm, I'm doing a lot more uh, recruiting from both Muncie and it, uh, we're in between Muncie and Marion. So it opens us up to a bigger area. Yeah, definitely being a community team can be difficult to recruit. I've got that experience firsthand. So huge props to you guys for doing it in style. Clearly put together a very solid robot this year. So I know Bryce, you were on the robot design uh, build team. Do you want to take us through maybe your design strategy a little bit more, how you made your decisions, what decisions you made, uh, all that good stuff? So our design strategy, we had, we didn't really have a design strategy to be honest, or at least not in the sense that I'm used to. We kind of, we had three, most of the time we had about three independent groups working on various things to do. So, you know, we had a couple of intakes going at the same time. We had a couple of shooters going. We had a couple of conveyors going all at once. And it's just whatever worked first kind of got put onto the robot and didn't come off of the robot. So our robot this year is just a collection of what worked and what got done fastest and what, you know, what kept getting iterated. Um, and you're intake, looking like a horse. Yes. The, that was not intentional, but a very good feature. So whose idea was the googly eye on the shooter wheel? That was my idea. They told me not to put the googly eye on the shooter shaft, that I could find a different way. But no, I had to have it on the shaft so that it would spin up. It's the best part about that googly eye. So do you have any issues with inspectors with that? Were your googly eyes rated for 5,000 RPM? <laughs> Uh, didn't have any issues with inspectors because I designed a handy little mount for it that um, it mounts on the shooter shaft here and it kind of envelops the googly eye without covering it at all. So, so no safety wire. The, yeah, it still spins up, but it doesn't ever fly off. Right on. So one of the questions, yeah, one of the questions we're getting from chat right now is how many iterations did you have on your shooter? So. so how many versions? Because you said you had a couple going, right? Yeah. So the shooter that I was working on, that shooter that ended up going on the robot, well, I kind of went back and forth. Do I want one wheel on the shooter? Do I want a hood? Do I want two wheels? Do I want this, that? So I think I had like four or five laser cut prototypes. And then another person had like two or three. And it's just... You know, changing the motors, changing the compression, changing the angle, all that, until it just worked. Fair enough. It's like the right best on. way to prototype, in my opinion, is just like practice, iteration, prototype, see what works. Is that what you then yeah. won the uh, Ex Excellence in Engineering Award for, or was that another cool free feature on the robot? So the EI, or it wasn't EI, Ex Excellence in Engineering Award, um, when they announced the award, they said the scissor lift. Um, cool. I That's just the first feature they mentioned in the award, which scissor lift climber, It's it worked better than I thought it would, to be honest. I had doubts about it, but... Yeah, I think the team that can really pull off the scissors, and uh, you know, back in 2015, uh, that robot, uh, uh, we kind of kind of were known for the scissors. So I've actually seen like a lot of scissor lifts in FRC. Um, I've seen a lot not done very well. What's one thing that makes your scissor lift work so well? I, I personally wasn't too involved in the building of it, but I know that they, they had a lot of stuff going on in those joints. That's not just like a bolt. They had a shoulder bolt. They had bushings in there. They have... Um, I think they put some sort of lubrication on that as well. So just pay attention to the joints a lot. You want to make it tight without making it constrained. Um, it, it, it's pretty beefy. Yeah, for sure. Definitely looks that way, at least. And then the other question I had more for Akash was, you've got this awesome robot. How, as a media team, can you best like utilize the tools that you have to promote it or reach out to your sponsors with the video clips? Like, how do you guys incorporate that media aspect into what otherwise seems like a very technically founded team? Um, <clears throat> can you repeat that, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just like, how do you incorporate? You do so, so much cool stuff with your robot. As a team, yeah. do you have any tips for incorporating media based on what you guys do 
into a team culture. Like, I know for us especially, it's like, okay, when it's all hands on deck, it's all hands on deck on the robot. How do you make sure that there's always someone making sure it all gets recorded? How do you make sure you're taking the pictures and you're not in the way, like all that stuff? Uh, well, one key thing is communication with other students. Like, in our building, we don't know what's happening on the field because we're separated. So we always have um, mechanical or programming students come in and tell us um, if stuff is going on. And then we just rush out there with our cameras and then take the sh pictures or videos. And yeah, like I think in my opinion, the uh, main thing is communication that um, will help a lot. What's your favorite part about doing media? Uh, video editing. Um, I, I love making videos. Um, I've been making videos since I was around eight or nine. And so a very long time ago. And it's just a passion of mine. And I just, I, yeah. I just wanted to chime in on the communication. Like when we were filming our robot reveal for reveal night, uh, we barely got that done in time. And it was, the robot had just started working that night. We didn't have it working before. So whenever we got something new working, we would run into the media room and shout, hey, Ben, we got something new working. <laughs> Come out and take a picture or a video. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Did everything work the first time? Yeah. Uh, it well, always. worked well. Always. I thought it's, all, it's always you know. the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, one other no. question we have from chat is, uh, what are the machining resources you guys have on your team? So... Machining capabilities. I already said we had a laser cutter. Um, the laser cutter was out for two weeks during the early build season, which was a real pain. So we have the laser cutter. We have a an Omeo. Um, we have a Tormac, one of their smaller mills. I or smaller CNCs, but we don't use that that often. Um, a mill, two lathes, a collection of bandsaws, drill presses, and hand tools. Sounds pretty right. awesome. Yeah, we're going to get back to that real quick. But Tyler, how about you tell us a little bit more about our sponsor, Striker? Yeah, uh, if you guys were watching the last show, I just want to give a big shout out uh, to Striker. Um, during times like this, uh, when you have a leading medical manufacturer out there that's been working really hard to get products out there, I just want to give a big shout out to them. Um, you know, Striker, we talk about them in regards to hiring with first a lot and, and bringing on first people. Uh, but like I said, um, during times like this, I really just want to highlight and give a big thanks to Striker for uh, everything that their company is doing in supporting uh, uh, the COVID-19 crisis and creating leading medical manufacturing equipment. I mean, literally, if you go in like every single hospital, you will find something from Stryker uh, in there that's truly helping out, uh, regardless if it's uh, some of their suction machines or anything else you see. Uh, I think about, you know, just a few months ago, I just had my first kid, and I literally turn in, in the OR and their striker equipment. And so that sort of thing just makes me ever so much more grateful for that, uh, that high end equipment is being produced uh, out of, out of Michigan and throughout the world for that. So thanks a lot to striker uh, for supporting fun, but also helping support uh, everything going on with the craziness and times right now. So thank you striker. Yeah. And you said about Michigan too. I just off note the other day I saw like a paramedic uh, trolley over here and it was a striker paramedic striker. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, getting back to the machining resources, you guys sound like you have like a lot of machining resources. How do you get the knowledge to the students? Like you have all this awesome equipment, but it's not that great if you don't have the students to use it. So how do they get that knowledge on the machines? How does this training process look like? We have a lot of great mentors that have actually been on the team for quite a, quite a few years. Uh, our lead mentor, Mike Cook, uh, actually last year won the, uh, the Woody Hours Award for the state. And uh, he's been here as one of the original founders of the uh, team, uh, does a great job with all of the uh, the machine shop and uh, the training there on, on really all of the equipment. Uh, we're lucky that we've got a lot of uh, parents to get involved. Uh, we've got some universities that are fairly close that uh, are able to get some mentors uh, from those, those universities as well. So uh, a really good blend of, of you know, electrical uh, engineering, uh, mechanical engineering mentors, uh, programmers, uh, media people. Uh, we've really just gotten gotten ourselves a really good mix of mentors that uh, love what they do. And uh, like I said, uh, quite a few of us have been on the team for, for many years. 
And then awesome. there's one specific question about the equipment you have, and I think it was answered in chat, but I just want to go over it again. Uh, what is the laser that you guys have for your laser cutter? Yeah, I think like Ryan said, it's the red 100 watt one on eBay. Hey, I don't, it's from China, I think. I don't know the specific brand. Yeah. Though I think right now it's not 100 watts because the new emitter that we bought only takes 80. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that actually has been a, a huge resource. Uh, we've, over the last several years, built two robots and decided this year with the uh, dropping the bag bag day that uh, we would just build one robot and all of the uh, prototyping that we were able to do, thanks to the laser cutter and the Omeo, uh, it, we had so many different iterations of things. And then uh, quickly going around, what is the one thing you guys are most excited for for next year slash the off season uh, with your team? What are you looking forward to uh, based off what you saw this year? Oh boy, um, I would think uh, continuing what we uh, what we did this year. Uh, we really several years ago changed our mindset, and uh, the thing that uh, that I noticed that OP uh, Robotics did, and and they were uh, our team captain for uh, IRI that we won with them. They go into every competition expecting to win, and we kind of changed that mindset and went into this season and saw the uh, the robustness of the robot that we had and thought, um, let's go with the, with the goal of uh, trying to win everything if we can. And uh, by golly, that first competition, uh, we did it. As for the off season, I'm looking forward to training some new students because we're losing our, we're losing the senior that did a lot of design this year. So I'm going to, have, as a junior turning into a senior next year, I'm going to have to take up that mantle, which is going to be a challenge. And I'm also going to have to train new students to take up that after I leave. So that's going to be fun. Yeah, we've always found it tough, especially over um, on our team, just to have that continual knowledge going through. So it's good that you're looking forward to where the team is going to be going and getting all your juniors um, and your freshmen all trained up. Just so, don't ever leave. Just never leave, and then you don't have to train anyone else. Easy. All of our, all of our students go. go to Waterloo, yeah. except except me. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, guys. So Tyler brought up our giveaway a little earlier. It's the Ada sixteen four seventy IMU giveaway. So the keyword for that's going to be fixed. T H Y X T. Um, and go ahead, put that in in the chat, and we'll draw for that in just a few minutes. You can see it being spammed in chat now. So. Try to win. Yeah. Remember, remember, fun subs will have the rigged answer and uh, get five times extra luck. So, uh, one other question I had. I guess we didn't hear from Akash. What's your? Uh, what's the thing you're looking most or most forward to next year? Um, just the competition spirit, I guess. I and mean, it was really fun at our only competition this year. But it's also kind of sad that it was our only competition this year. Um, so just hoping um, for the uh, off-season competitions and, you know, bring that spirit back up. For sure. And then one last question from the chat. Uh, are your robots powder-coated or spray-painted? They're powder-coated in-house. In-house. In in house. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. You go yeah, into the little room our in the our back. Own, and uh, uh, yeah. We built our own little uh, spray booth and then have our uh, actually built our own uh, little oven to uh, to bake them. So that's super cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Saves the time is spray it, painting. Is it too. an you easy bake spray. oven? Uh, <laughs> a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. It's kind of kind of hard to find those uh, light bulbs for it. So. <laughs> So one thing I'm actually really curious about is your guys' um, Skywalker mechanism, as I like to call it. What was the thinking behind, hey, like, this is important. We need to be able to translate on the bar. Whose idea was that? It was <laughs> – so at, on kickoff, the first thing we agreed on was we're not going to focus on a Skywalker that's too hard and it doesn't give you that much benefit – and then the next meeting, everyone who was doing any sort of design came in with a Skywalker design. <laughs> so, so you're not just, doing one, right? <laughs> so it was just something that we're like, okay, it's not 
that much extra work to put on. It means we need to spend a little more time deploying our hook because it's going to be heavier. But in all honesty, it's a bag motor and a versa planetary and a wheel. Like, and how often did you guys find yourself great. using that in competition? I think we used it. We used it pretty much every time we climbed to yeah. some degree or another. Um, I don't think like, it. So Sorry, was that like, was that was, like automated or was that no. like just controlled by the operator? That was, it was originally controlled by the operator at the start of the competition, but then we figured uh, since the driver isn't doing anything when we're climbing, we might as well give him the controls so that he can move to the side while I'm climbing up. Yeah, was, that definitely seems opinion. like something that's like, you don't think it's useful to have until that one match where it comes in clutch and then you're really thankful that you have it for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it made it a lot easier. You could just set the hook like six inches off where you needed to be and just move over. Especially with like how how narrow and how small that area was to be able to get in and then make the fine adjustments later. All right, so Tyler, I'm just gonna, Tyler's gonna tell us who our winner for the giveaway was. Yeah, once again, we're giving away that uh, analog devices IMU uh, PHYXT. Uh, what's the keyword? And the winner is going to be this is a fun host uh, winathon today. Uh, Nick Mathis uh, wins it. Uh, congratulations. Lots of rigged emotes, congrats. please. We've clearly rigged it for him to win. Uh, but congrats, Nick, uh, on that. This is, this is just a fun host giveaway bizarre a thon going on right now. So, Tyler, could you say it was fixed for him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm hanging up. I'm done. Yeah, right. <laughs> and with that said, that's our bell. All right. Um, thank you so much for you guys for watching. Um, obviously, the season's been cut short, but it's really nice to just get some teams on, see you know what's going on with different teams, and we have plenty more shows coming throughout the season. So all we ask is you tell your friends this is the place to go for your first robotics fix. If you have a couple bucks to share, please do. If not, we're glad to have you on board and. Um, on behalf of uh, Tyler, myself, Hagen, and the moderator in chat, I'd like to thank 1720, Sean, Akash, and Bryce. It was great to talk about your awesome robot, and I wish we had like another half hour. We could just talk about it a little more, but that was awesome. Um, so thank, thank you so much for coming on. And our next show is going to be in Espanol, and we're going to go down to Mexico. See you next time. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.